tonight let's pray father bless the broadcast on YouTube and also Facebook speak to people's hearts and for them to watch the broadcast and find the broadcast and share the broadcast for your son Jesus sake Jesus the Savior the only Savior of the world save the sinner amen all right welcome to the broadcast Job chapter 1, verses 20 and 22. We see in the Word of God, Then Job arose, rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Now this is after a tornado had killed all ten of his kids, children. The... Uh, Sam Beans had come and stolen all of his oxen and donkeys and killed some of his servants. As I understand it, I can't even read my own writing. The Chaldeans came and killed his servants and took his camels. And fire out of heaven killed his sheep and his servants. All of this, one wave after another of nothing but bad news. When it rains, it pours. Job has no idea that God has given the devil permission to attack him, to try to get him to blaspheme, to see if he will blaspheme the Lord and turn his back on God. <clears throat> Most people probably would have quit serving the Lord when all ten of their children are killed in one tornado. Wouldn't you agree from your experience in life out there? Job didn't. Job went through these waves of bad news. And what what happens? He fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of the mother's womb. Now this man is one of the wealthiest men in the world and he's losing his wealth like crazy to thieves and murderers and fire out of heaven and all this stuff. And he says, in worship, he says, Naked came I out of the mother's womb, naked shall I return hither. So he told the truth there. There's never a, there's never a, a U-Haul or a vault behind a hearse. <laughs> Whether you're poor, middle class, or rich, or extremely rich, we all die and we're put in a six-foot hole unless you get something above the ground, a tomb. We all die and leave it all behind. And Job realized that. He said the Lord gave. He realized that God was the one who blessed his work. Amen, somebody. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 22, In all this Job sinned not, nor not, nor charged God foolishly. I don't think I would have done as good as Job, just let's to be honest tonight. But Job passed the test so far. He's going to pass the test if you've read the whole book of Job. He comes out a winner in the end, double what he lost. So I titled this Worship in the Midst of Woe. It's easy. I've heard preachers say this, and it's so true. It's easy to praise the Lord and worship the Lord when everything's going great. You know, but it is hard when 
everything you're doing seems to not be working and things are going south. And we see here, the word worship means to honor God. Now think about this. All ten of his kids are getting ready to be buried. They were killed in a tornado. Some of his servants have been killed and murdered by thieves and robbers and invading armies. Uh, on and on and on. And Job, in the midst of all of this, is honoring God. He is paying homage to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, to, the, to God. He bows to the earth. It means to get on your knees. How about that? <clears throat> and also, he doesn't blaspheme God. That's what the devil said he would do. The devil told God, you take all these riches from him, he'll curse you to your face. Instead of that, instead of blaspheming, blaspheming God, he's blessing the Lord. I looked up that word bless. It means to kneel. It means to praise, celebrate, and adore the Lord. So in the midst, that's the, that's the message tonight. In the midst of our woes, may we be found by the Lord worshiping him. Help, and only the Holy Ghost can help us to do that in the midst of woe. Hallelujah. All right, we had several requests, and other people watched the broadcast today. They were put on the prayer list so far. We, uh, just to give you an idea of how many people we pray for in different states. Good to see Mark and Pam and my wife and others who will be tuning in. Listen to this. North Carolina, South Carolina, Bangladesh, Virginia, Uganda, <clears throat> many from South Carolina, Africa. West Africa, Florida. These are just some of the states and countries that are on our prayer list. And we're almost, it's only what, Wednesday. Last week we had two whole pages full of people we prayed over tonight. So God is starting to, we're faithful. We've been faithful now for four years. And God is going to honor our faithfulness to the broadcast. And he's took care of us, and he's, and so the Lord is using our little broadcast to touch people's lives for the glory of Jesus. All right, does anybody have a special request tonight? Brother Mark, the scriptures for tomorrow is Proverbs 5, 6. Proverbs 5, 6. Anybody have a prayer request before we close it out in prayer tonight. Proverbs 5, 6. Let me give you the announcements. Tomorrow morning, another work day, so I'll be on early at between 6 and 6.30. You can watch the broadcast anytime on my wall. Also, tomorrow night, I'll be back on about this time tomorrow night. Also, you can email me at cordellclayton at yahoo.com. You can write us at 119 Terry. T-E-R-R-Y Avenue M-N-I-N-M-A-N South Carolina 29349 or you can private message us or you can leave your praise or prayer request in the YouTube comment section at Clay Cordell on YouTube. This broadcast will be on YouTube in just a little bit. There will also be a place on my Facebook page for tonight for you to leave your prayer request if you have any. That's, and that's all the announcements. Alright, Brother Mark. Hallelujah. Um, let me tell you what uh, happened to a man. I believe it was down in Georgia. A preacher told this story today. On, I believe it was Rod Parsley's network. And you can go watch it. Today's broadcast. Just type in, go to Rod Parsley's website and watch today's broadcast um, on Breakthrough. And uh, James, Dr. James Payne told the story <clears throat> that there was a fella. All right, Poncho will do that. There's, that's Pam's husband. His name is Poncho. Pray for his family. We'll do that in just a second. <clears throat> Let me tell you what happened. This man was living on uh, a disability. 
and he had some land, but it was down near the river, which wasn't worth anything because it flooded every time the river flooded. But he had some, he had a place to fish. <laughs> Probably could never, he didn't think he'd ever be able to make any money or anything because it flooded all the time when it rained. Well, this preacher, Dr. Payne, was somewhere in Georgia raising money for a, a church or a Christian uh, outreach or movement or television broadcast. And he was asking for people to give an offering to help, you know, pay for television time or whatever the case for this preacher uh, who had a television ministry. And so this fella on a fixed disability income gave $500. That's like, to him, that would be like $50,000. Okay? This is a true story. He gave $500, and, I, and that was a sacrifice. Somebody ought to say in the comment section, that is a sacrifice. Because most, on you know, disability, you don't make a whole lot in a, a month. You get that one check, you got to make it stretch, and that's, you know. So he stepped out by faith and sowed a seed of $500. Well, guess what happened the very next day? The county, the county government called him at his house and said, we'll pay you $50,000 today if you'll let us get some dirt off your land near the river. <laughs> so this fella stepped out by faith. It takes faith, friend. So that's, that's a sacrifice. And the very next day, God sent him $50,000. Only God, God honors when you and I step out by faith. So I thought that would be an encouragement to you. That is a sacrifice. Yes, Pam, it was. He's got more faith than I've got. I'll tell you that right now. So, I thought that would encourage you tonight. Encourage me. All right. All right, let's pray for Poncho's family. All of you out there that are watching, that know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, the ones that are, have commented, let's pray for Poncho and his family right now I'll lead us Lord we bow our humble head to God Almighty the one true and living God the God of the Bible Lord we know you as our Savior Jesus we believe in prayer we believe you answer prayer Lord we believe but help our unbelief Amen, somebody. Lord, help our faith to get stronger than it should be. It should be stronger than it is. God, help us to be like that man in Georgia to follow the Lord. To step out by faith and sacrifice and, and give and watch you do the miraculous. It's impossible for you not to do nothing, God. You are no respecter of a person. We pray that you will bless Pancho's family tonight. We pray supernaturally you will protect them, provide for them, heal them, and if their souls are not saved, save them. In Jesus' name we pray, bless our little broadcast. May we always lift up the Bible, the Word of God, and Jesus, the only Savior of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. I felt the Lord. Amen. It's good to feel the Lord. Amen. Dr. Jack Laster said one time, he was preaching in a camp meeting in Kentucky. If I remember the story right, and a preacher went out, and they went out to eat with a bunch of preachers and fellow brothers and sisters, a lot of them at the, at the revival night. And one of the preachers looked at Jack and said, Jack, I'm not into that feeling stuff you're talking about tonight. I'm into just the Word of God and faith. And Jack looked at him and said, Well, 
I disagree with you. Everybody Jesus touched, he didn't get what they had. They got what he had. <laughs> and he said, ask Lazarus if he felt something when God raised him from the dead. Ask Jairus' daughter, did she feel something when Jesus raised her from the dead? Ask the widow of Nain's son when Jesus raised him out of the coffin in front of everybody as they were marching to the, the graveside back from the dead. Did he feel something? Ask blind. He went through a long list of people in the word of God that Jesus healed or raised from the dead. Even the thief on the cross got saved. One of them went to hell, the other one went to heaven. And he looked at that fellow and said, that preacher, he said, no, I'm going to stick with, I've got, I'm going to stick with the feeling. <laughs> I'm glad God gave me something I could feel. Amen. All right. That's it for tonight. I felt the Lord too. Amen. Amen, Sister Pam. I wish I had just 10 people like my wife and Pam and Mark and others that share my broadcast. I really do. We could reach more people. Let's pray that God, it, it's a battle. I believe it's a spiritual battle. I believe the devil's trying to keep us just hemmed in. It's been going on for four years. We need the Lord to break us out where we can start reaching more people for Christ, reaching more people with the Word of God. And let's uh, pray tonight in Jesus' name that we will see what God's about to do through our little broadcast that all of you support uh, by your prayers. Some of you give, send offerings to us to help my wife and I. And uh, God will bless you, Luke 638. You know who you are. Some of you share the broadcast. Some of you help behind the scenes like Brother Mark with teaching resources and my wife putting it on YouTube. Some of you watch every broadcast. And you know who you are. Well, I can get right here and start talking like Pam, Mark, Eric, my wife, and others. Tammy, Todd, Georgia, Becky, North Carolina, on and on. We need to pray that God will bless us and use us through this broadcast. Amen, somebody. And Pam said she's already shared this one. That's amen. I really usually don't say things unless the Lord tells me to, but Pancho, if you're listening to the broadcast tonight, God is getting ready to do something big financially. Now, I've, many of you have watched me. I've never, I don't think I've ever said this. God is getting ready. I'm talking to Pancho, the husband, and Pam, her husband. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know who it's going to be. But something big's about to happen for you, your family. I'm talking about not just here, but in Mexico. God is getting ready to do a miracle by the hand of God, his hand. So he told me to tell you all that, Pam. So if uh, Poncho's already left the room, you go ahead and tell him that y'all better watch out because something big's coming from God. He's... He's about to bless all of your kids, your parents, your all with healing and provision and supernatural abundance. You say, wow, no, it's going to happen because he told me to say it. All right, good night. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the Jewish people. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in to this little broadcast. Brother Mark, you get the scriptures. Yeah, Proverbs 5, 6. All right, good night, everybody.